What's up guys, welcome back to the Educated Barfly. Today we're gonna be making a, a cocktail called the Little Tokyo. It's done by LA bartender Tobin Shea, who is the Spirits Program Director, head bartender over at Redbird Los Angeles. Uh, so Redbird is a restaurant opened by Neil Frazier and he opened it inside an old, uh, like an abandoned church in uh, the Little Tokyo district of um, downtown LA. And a little fun fact about Little Tokyo is that it is the world, it is the, not the world's, but it is the, the North, North America's largest Japanese American population uh, residing there. Um, obviously you see, we've got some sake, Capoletti. It has taken its uh, inspiration from the neighborhood. Uh, but let's get into making the cocktail. One thing though is stay tuned to the end of the episode and where I'm gonna give you a little bit of info on Capoletti. I wanted to start talking through uh, different uh, spirits bottles that I know that I'm gonna get questions about so that you guys have all the information that you need. Uh, all right, let's get into making the drink. So first thing we're gonna do is quarter of an ounce of yuzu juice. Then we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of our Capoletti Aperitivo. I'm gonna kind of give it like a little gloop. You hear that? It was like gloop, gloop, gloop. I like that. that. was a very pleasing sound. I like that. It's cartoony. It's very cartoony. And then we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of uh, Dolan Sweet Vermouth. And an ounce and a half of Nigori Sake. So Nigori Sake is referred to as cloudy sake. It is basically sake that has bits of un- um, fermented rice in it still. And that's what you need to know about that. It's a very nice sake. I like it. This is a nice kind of Negroni style low ABV cocktail that we're going to be doing here. I'm very excited to taste it. And crack our first cube as we do. Then get some more of our nice ice in there. Give it a whirl. Very nice color as well, this cocktail. I'm digging everything about it. This is one of those cocktails I actually haven't tasted yet. Maybe some of you will get your wish and I'll not like it. But I don't think so. I think I'm gonna like this. I know all of the ingredients and I think like I'm sake? gonna like it. What's that? Do you like sake? I do like sake, yeah. Although, you know, I gotta say that I don't really drink nigori sake very much, the cloudy sake. I usually drink the, the kind of clear sake. I gotta say, to tell you the honest to God truth, I don't really know all that much about sake. Um, and then we're gonna take our rock of ice, put it in our glass. Uh, I should learn more about sake. I am a fan of it though. And then we're just gonna pour our cocktail over our rock. Ooh, nice wash line too. I like that, ooh, I like that. You know what I wanna do though, Marius? Well, it's okay, I actually don't need to. I wanted to, uh, I did not forget a knife because I was, I was thinking I would just stick the peel in, but you know, honestly, we have been talking about our garnish game being a little bit better. So I, you know what? I am gonna get a knife out of the sink, wash it off. Where's that little knife that I was using earlier? Oh man, I didn't put it away, did I? This is not a case of me forgetting. I wanted the, well, I can't find it, so whatever, it's fine. I'll just put it in there. I wanted to make like a little twist on the top. All right, let's taste it. Ooh, that's really nice. So the sake kind of lends it. Sake has, it's kind of an interesting sort of flavor to describe. The only word that I can think of that really describes sake in my estimation is like musty, like a musty sort of smell, uh, taste, which actually doesn't really sound, sound very good. good. Yeah. You know, it sounds like mold, but it, it doesn't, it's, it's sort of like, I don't know how to describe the, the flavor of sake, but it's like kind of this sort of a musty sort of taste, but like in a very pleasant way. And then you've got the capoletti kind of filling in that, you know, you've got that kind of sweet and bitter aperitivo. Capoletti is bitter and it is, it is a bitter aperitivo, but it's not super, super bitter like Campari would be. It's not as astringent, I think the word would be. Um, as Campari, it's a little smoother. Uh, and you know, obviously you're getting a lot of the notes of the Dolan that, you know, sweet vermouth. Dolan is one of my favorite sweet vermouths. 
and all, but it's just a very well balanced cocktail. I like it because it's crushable. You could just like drink, you could drink a whole bunch of these and you know, you're not ruining your afternoon if you're day drinking or you're not ruining your night. Like this is a good night starter. Um, so there it is, the, uh, the little Tokyo, I gotta say, uh, uh, bravo Tobin, I really like the cocktail. Um, so yeah, let's talk about Capoletti a little bit. So Capoletti is a, is a wine-based aperitivo made in the Trento. <laughs> uh, 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 it's, it's a town, I guess the town of Trento, which is in the Alto Adige uh, area of Italy. Um, it is a little bit different. It, it actually, I think it, it says that it could be, or like that I've learned, that it could be one of the oldest aperitivo out there. Older than Campari, maybe older than Cran Classico. Um, it is actually referred to as Specialino by the, uh, the natives in that particular area. And is made by the Capoletti family that make a lot of other uh, aperitivos and uh, amari. Uh, I wanted to give this a little taste by itself outside of the cocktail so I can give you guys some flavor uh, kind of notes on it. See what the profile's like. Oh, that's really nice. So what I really like about this is because it's wine based, it's actually a little bit more um, uh, sharp on the finish, a little more astringent. It is, uh, you know, it's, got, it's sweet. It kind of reminds me of um, Coqui Americano, but a little more bitter. You know, Coqui Americano has a little bit of sweetness to it. Whereas this is like a little bit more bitter. It's got a really nice texture. Um, but it's not as bitter as something like Campari would be. So this would be like really easy, very, very palatable. So I think that Camp something like Campari, even Gran Classico, is so bitter on the finish that a lot of people say that you kind of got to be a professional kind of... I mean, here's the thing. Not like a professional, but what I meant to say was is that when I first tried Campari, the flavor was so... Um, it was so specific, so big, so bitter that it actually took me a while to sort of acquire the taste for it. And now I love Negronis, but it is something that is so harsh uh, that you really got to get used to it. Whereas something like Capoletti is very soft on the finish. Uh, it has that nice kind of astringency from the wine. And it's this really nice sharp sharpness and there's enough sweetness in there that it makes it really easy drinking. Would this be a good substitution for Campari for those that didn't really like Campari? Yeah, I mean, well, here's the thing. It Yes, you can use aperitivo. Like, you can use any aperitivo in a Negroni, right? And it would be a good... Um, it would be like a good introduction to Campari almost. Like, it would be a good way to, like, sort of build yourself up to Campari. Because Campari has a lot of these same notes, but it's just so bitter on the finish. Whereas this is much lighter. And so people who don't like Campari could actually kind of prime their palate with this as they kind of work their way up to Campari, if they're interested in doing that, you know? I mean, that's just saying like, the thing is, is that if you acquire the taste of Campari, there's nothing better than, I mean, it's really, really good. So the thing is, I wouldn't say nothing better because I love a lot of, aper there are a ton of aperitivo out there that I really like. I love Capoletti. The thing about Capoletti, I guess like, uh, so I guess some would call it a downside is that you have to keep it in the fridge because it is a wine-based aperitivo. So like vermouth, because it's based in wine, if you don't leave it in the fridge, it's going to go bad. Um, and you want to make sure that you keep all of your uh, vermouths and wine-based spirits fresh. So, I don't mean, I don't think it's a drawback. Uh, my wife thinks it's a drawback because our fridge is filled with bottles of Aperitivo. And she's like, when are you going to get these out of my fridge? But, you know, c'est la vie. All right, guys, I think that's all I got for you on this episode. So go make your Little Tokyo. Go visit Little Tokyo when you're in L.A. They got some nice ramen spots. And drink this cocktail based on that, inspired by that, um, uh, by that neighborhood. And I guess I'll see you guys on another time. If you like our channel, please hit like and subscribe. Check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash educatedbarfly. And check out our, our, our new channel, Barfly Free Pour. Um, it is, we've got some new content going there. Uh, our Patreon is always, uh, got some awesome stuff coming out on our Patreon. So go check that out. And I'll see you guys later.